Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, we've got key takeaways after a back-to-back win weekend in Nova Scotia. And we've got a boots-on-the-ground report from our Sen Central citizen this episode. It's Mitch Donnelly. All that and a second round of cuts and more high draft picks on waivers. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 886 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, a reminder you can follow Locked On Senators wherever you download your podcast free and available on YouTube. We're on social media on Twitter at Send Central, Instagram Locked On dot Senators. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchases. That's concerts, sports, you name it. The Game Time app has it. Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Pillsy, today is Tuesday, October third. And when I first used the Game Time app, it was for last year's home opener, Senators Bruins, where we saw Artem Zub score, and it is his birthday today. Happy birthday, Mr. Zub. Happy birthday to Zub. Boom. Artem Zub, happy birthday. How old are Zub? How old are Zub? <laughs> and his response is, thank you, Zen's Vans. He's actually 28 years old, second oldest defenseman on the Ottawa Senators, believe it or not, after Travis Hamanick. I mean, there's a lot of youth on that back end. A lot of youth. Fourth year with the Senators as well. That surprised me when I saw that. Feels like just yesterday that he came over from Russia. And was a healthy scratch for two weeks. Whew. A lot of healthy scratches last night made it through the round of cuts. Some didn't, though. Unfortunately, two more high draft picks. We're put on waivers. Jacob Bernard Docker and Igor Sokolov. Your thoughts on the most recent round of cuts? I mean, th- this is the business of hockey. This is uh, kind of the ebbs and flows of preseason is you get to see these guys. You get a taste of uh, guys trying to battle for their spots in camp. But ultimately, there's only so many spots and cuts have to happen. And I think... A lot of people are disappointed about uh, JBD's performance here. And this felt like a year where he had to take a step, especially uh, being on a one-way contract this year. Didn't really happen. Didn't see much of anything from JBD. So I don't think too many people are that surprised that he's getting cut. Now, Igor Sokolov, obviously friend of the show, we're rooting for him. And he's put in a lot of work to try to get to a spot where he feels like the Senators will have to give him a spot in the NHL or at least a better opportunity than he's had in the past. Unfortunately, that's just not the case here. And there's so much competition for the spots that he's trying to fight for. You got Yuri Schmeichel, Bailey, uh, Yarventi, Highmore, Chartier. There's so many guys that are trying to get a bottom six role here. Unfortunately for Igor, he, di- he didn't make that cut. And both those guys will be placed on waivers today at 2 p.m. Eastern, so we will find out their fate on Wednesday at the same time. It's unfortunate. You look at how many roster spots are realistically available, and I understand if this was the ultimate decision on both these guys. It's just kind of strange to me, the, the players that are left in camp and we'll get to versus the players who were sent down in terms of, Hire like, you know, guys who were either just brought in as free agents, two-way guys, Rook Chartier, Boko Imama, just to name a couple, or guys who, you know, we thought were going to have their one-way contracts challenged in Parker Kelly and Zach uh, McEwen, and it ends up not happening that way, whereas Igor Sokolov gets a couple of NHL games in preseason. I think he played all right. He probably would let you know that, you know, the the style of, of playing on the fourth line is different. Then when yep. you're a top line scorer in Belleville and oh man, we, we love Belleville on this show. We've got a soft spot for them. 
it's going to be tough if these two get claimed after Lassie Thompson yesterday. This is a no excuses year for Belleville, who's never won a playoff game. In their- yeah, that's that's the thing. Like Belleville's got to got to get going here. Uh, they're always on my kind of radar at the start of the season of having a good team and hopefully can make some noise in the Calder Cup playoffs. But you look at JBD and uh, Igor Sokolov uh, being put on waivers. JBD is an interesting one because that's a one-way deal. So that's that's going to cost teams a little bit more money. That's a little bit more of a risk. Whereas Igor, the two-way, maybe that'll be more enticing for, for teams going forward. So I don't, I, I don't think either of these guys will get claimed, Ross. That's kind of where, where I'm at right now. I agree with that. But it is unfortunate still. And I think the standpoint I look at this from is just the unfortunate aspect that these players were kept and groomed in the organization for so long. Developed would be a better word to use. Yep. And then to not get any return on it and to just cut bait, theoretically. Now, both these players could still be in the organization tomorrow. But after Lassie Thompson was claimed by literally the first priority team in waivers, it just doesn't feel like there's that much confidence where where these guys are, are going to make it through. But if there is a time, maybe it's this time of year. I'm not sure yeah. what the the thought process is in terms of, you know, uh, when the time is to cut bait, but it feels like between Lassie Thompson and JVD, two players that we've argued their merits for years upon years, who's going to get that opportunity first? It just felt like maybe internally they could have decided a little bit before everybody knew what they had to do so that you can move on from the asset before the value reaches absolute zero. I think the issue here, Ross, is the Ottawa Senators are at a point where they spent years collecting all these draft picks, all these prospects, all this kind of young capital, as Jeff Merrick likes to say, green bananas that uh, you hope ripen. And now they're at a point where they're not rebuilding anymore. They're trying to build a contender. They're spending to the cap. So you need these guys on entry level deals to make an impact so that you can fit into the cap. And that's why you keep all these green bananas. You hope some of them work. And then you just get to a point where they're they're Sure. The entry level deals are great for the cap, but their play isn't good enough to beat out someone that has a higher cap. Hit. So it's that struggle of the value of a low contract in a cap league in a cap world versus the skill of guys that are making more money because they're more experienced like you got to find that balance and I think that's where Alassie Thompson sure it'd be nice to get that entry-level uh, contract uh, as a guy maybe on a bottom pair if you're the Ottawa Senators but he's not beating out Travis Hamnick Eric Brandstrom uh, I mean even Max Gannett apparently he, he's not beating out and then you look at a team like Anaheim who's like sweet This is a young prospect that we're picking up off waivers. We're getting for free. He's going to fit into our plans perfectly here. So it's just, it's, it's so tough trying to decide the best time to do that because there was rumors that Lassie Thompson was going to be added as a sweetener to any kind of cap dump deal that the Ottawa senators were working on. But if your team's looking at this, you're like, okay, Lassie Thompson, that's an interesting prospect. That's a nice little sweetener. But why would I have that turn into value in a trade when I know you're going to have to send him through waivers and I can end up having an opportunity to pick him up for free, right? So I just, the Sens are in a tough place leverage-wise here. And I think that's where a lot of the decisions are ultimately coming down to and uh, not really playing out in the Sens' favor here. No, it, it hasn't been... It hasn't been great to see the way that assets have been managed is kind of the way that, that I'm coming at this from where it's like, you could, you know, maybe, maybe it was a bad pick at the time and maybe we had our goggles on, but we, we always said JBD was going to be that one way mm-hmm. shut down defense, been maybe not as physical as, as a Mark Mathot, but that same like steady presence for a more offensive minded roaming style defenseman, but it just hasn't worked out in the development path. And it doesn't seem like there's enough of a B game there to really make an impact. So uh, I think in a vacuum, just like I said with Lassie, Jacob Bernard Docker being on waivers. The only surprise is when Pierre Dorian told us this summer, he had the inside track on, on, on being a sixth defenseman, let alone seventh. And now if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the remaining players in senators camp, the Sens cut all, but seven defensemen, the six one way players that played in Halifax. And we will get into the Halifax and Cape Breton games more with Mitch Donnelly in our next segment coming up. But Max Gannett, 
makes the team theoretically. They could always cut and go with six defensemen, but he's on a two way contract, no waivers. So yep. they didn't beat out just Travis Hamanick, as I'm seeing a lot on Twitter, because it's an easy player to dunk on for fans, making 1.1 million. So his roster slot versus JBDs, you're looking at the difference of about, I don't know, 200 grand, give or take. It's yep. Max Gannett that made this team as the seventh defenseman. It's Max Gannett that had double the amount of points in Belleville than Jacob Bernard Docker last year and played well defensively, earned his first NHL game in Buffalo. In game Much eight. more than double the points, Ross. Much more. Quadruple? I mean, he had 40. Like, how, Did JVD even have 10? I don't think. I, I think JVD, I'd, I'll have to check this. Uh, I think he might have had four or five points. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm looking be- at it right now. Yeah, Never Max Gannett with five goals, 35 assists for 40 points. Jacob Bernard Docker, 41 games, two goals, four assists for six points. Yeah, and the defensive numbers weren't necessarily elite either. Yeah. So I, I have no problem with them putting JBD on waivers. We'll see how that impacts things going forward, if or if not, whether he gets cleared. And uh, up front, man, it sucks. We mentioned with Igor wishing him the best. Uh, I hope that he gets claimed from the standpoint that it would guarantee him a role in the NHL and maybe on a team that could put him in their top six and, and let him work because I do believe there's, there's NHL potential there and that he's scratching the surface, but I just don't know if it was ever going to work in a fourth line role where you're asking him to bang bodies and, you know, play on the defensive side of the puck for, for a lot of time. I, anyways, that that's one of the cuts. The other cuts here, uh, Kevin Mandelazy, no surprise, Nicholas Mattin Palo, no real surprise. Although I thought he, he showed that he could be a number one call up, uh, in a pinch on the right side of the blue line. Yep. Tyler Clevin gets uh, gets sent down. He gets to play games. That's good for him. And then up front, Zach Stapchuk and Cole Reinhardt. We mentioned uh, JBD and Sokolov also on waivers. Uh, Jacob Larson and Matthew Highmore. Any thoughts on the remaining players that were sent down and will join Belleville Sens training camp? Well, I've talked to him about it before and uh... – you know, my position stands. I'm, I'm glad uh, Clevin's going down to Belleville. I think it'll be really good for him to get uh, top four minutes down there, at least for the time being. I thought Matthew Highmore and um, Cole Reinhardt might've got a better, longer look here because they looked really good uh, in, in their roles so far. I, I'm kind of joining you, Ross. I, I think the Josh Bailey experiment is over. I uh, haven't been too impressed. Like, sure, he's got a, a handful of secondary assists, but his overall play hasn't been good, and he just has no pace, so it's going to be tough for him to stick on this team. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. I think Rook Chartier is, is being kept up here. That's that uh, center depth insurance, and Rook Chartier, for all purposes, has looked pretty good in this uh, showing so far. Yeah, really good at killing yeah. penalties uh, as well. I, I think Kaslik need, needs a strong last couple of games where he could be on the same JBD path where you're on a one-way contract but uh, ultimately get placed on waivers. Because for me, in the center roles right now, like Rook Chartier has been right there with him, if not better. Yep. The Greg's been better. Roby Arventi's all, they've all been better than him. Yeah, so, no, that's fair. I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out. Uh, Yuri Smekow makes it through that round of cuts. No real surprise. He's been solid, scored a goal in Cape Breton on Sunday as well, or yes, on Sunday as well. All right. All that to say, we've got more to get into from the weekend. I want to say weekend. I know it was Sunday, Monday, but uh, give me a break on that one. Back to back games for the Ottawa Senators in Nova Scotia. Mitch Donnelly was there. He's our Sen Central citizen. Coming up after the break, we'll discuss a little bit more about the players who are left and which camp battles we're watching most closely as we've got two preseason games left. The Senators are completely off today. They're uh, taking a golf day, a getaway, and they'll be on the ice in central Nova Scotia, according to the Sens Communications Department, for a skate on Wednesday before flying to Winnipeg, where they will play on Thursday night all that's next you're listening to locked on senators today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at game time ross already mentioned them at the start of the episode but it bears repeating because look nhl season is coming up nba season uh mlb playoffs the jays are in the playoffs uh nfl you got to get your tickets, and the best way to do that is to go on Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. It should be exciting. So with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. Forget planning months in ahead. It's a nice day. You want to head to the ballpark. You live in the city. 
get the tickets that day and head down and enjoy the game and the weather. You can get tickets for football, basketball, baseball, hockey, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. In fact, if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And this is what Ross loves most about game time. You get images of your seats before you buy. So you want to make sure the logo is facing the right way. You want to make sure you're looking at the bench. You want to make sure you're not uh, obstructed view. Game time has you covered. So download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code locked on NHL for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute ticket prices, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode is also brought to you by my happy place. You know, it's Shawarma Palace. I'm going to be there in less than 10 days, and I'm excited to get my platter, chicken, extra garlic, and Nothing makes me happier than when the pita is just the right temperature. It's soft. It's fluffy. You can dip that right into the hummus that they put on there. You got the fresh salad. You literally have it all in a plate. <laughs> the only thing you don't have is someone to share with. You got to bring that yourself. It's sold separately. But you got to make sure that you bring someone with you when you get that platter from Shawarma Palace. The sandwiches are always delicious. Everything is fresh ingredients. Ottawa's only place to go for Shawarma since 1997. They've got seven different locations all across Ottawa. With more coming soon, maybe. We can tell you, though, you can find them at the Carleton University Food Court. You can find them downtown. You can find them in the East End. You're never too far away from a shawarma palace. But if you're too lazy to get out there, you just want food brought to you, go check out Uber Eats, the exclusive delivery partner of Shawarma Palace. So you can get Shawarma Palace delivered right to your door. Go check them out today. Go find them on social media. Shawarma Palace, Ottawa. Go eat like a royal. Go eat at Shawarma Palace. All right, now let's get to today's Send Central Citizen. Here is Mitch Donnelly. All right, we now welcome on this week's Send Central Citizen. We're going out to the East Coast where we bring on Mitch Donnelly. Mitch, what's going on, man? Welcome to Locked On Senators. Thanks for having me, guys. Really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. And it's uh, timely after the Senators play two games, first in Cape Breton, then in Halifax. And you weren't at one. You went to both. Take us through the process of when you found out the Sens were coming out there and how you went from place to place to follow the team. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my my wife's family all lives in Cape Breton. So we found out that uh, Craft Hockey Bill had, had been one up in Sydney. Um, you know, we were really excited. We thought, you know, it'd be great to get some tickets. And we found out that actually the minor hockey program was the one that actually doled out the tickets. So it was, weren't tickets that you could actually buy. Um, so really, uh, it only came up to the last couple of days before the game. Uh, we had planned a trip up there to coordinate around, you know, seeing family, but also, you know, hopefully to get to a game. Um, but uh, yeah, it turned out a couple of days before the uh, my father-in-law and my my sister-in-law both won tickets um, nice. at their at their work, uh, and my brother-in-law actually was able to get some from a, a coworker as well. So uh, we ended up having six tickets, um, brought the whole family along. Um, and it was uh, it was a really great time. Really cool to to see that. It's really cool part of uh, of you know hockey, but also cool to see like NHL hockey in, in Sydney. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, Mitch, where are we talking to you from? Where where are you living? I live in Halifax, so uh, it's a short you know four hour drive up to uh, Cape Breton. We do it pretty much every month to visit the family. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to hear more about these games, but we got to start off the way we start every Sen Central Citizen off. Mitch, living out in Nova Scotia, how did you become an Ottawa Senators fan? Yeah, so I uh, I, I was born here, um, but shortly after moved up to uh, moved up to Ottawa. Um, okay. when I was you know about a year old um, with my mom and dad. My dad was actually uh, part of the Y one hundred five like the radio network up there. Um, so they sponsored the team when they first came into the league. Nice. Um, so, you know, I got to go to the, you know, the very first games in uh, the Civic Center and then obviously uh, the first games uh, in the Corral Center and, um, uh, you know, really had some great memories from being a you know young kid uh, living there. That's amazing. So going in the Civic Center, like what was it like watching a game there? That's a part of uh, history that I, w I wasn't able to, to get my, my eyes on. So what was it like going down, watching the Sens downtown? You know what? I, I wish I could tell you. I was just a, a little toddler. I've seen pictures, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, not, not not much recollection of it. So, who are your first favorite senators then? Oh, it's definitely. I'm a goalie uh, growing up, so I know it's a goalie friendly show. Um, you know, big fan of that. Um, so, you know, Ron Tugnut, Damian Rhodes, 
um, were absolute favorites of mine. I, you know, I hear Tug Nuts name a lot uh, on this podcast, but Damian Rhodes, you know, shout out to him. He was a, a classic scent as well. Um, so uh, that was a kind of a favorite. Um, and then obviously Alexi Ashen um, was a healthy scratch one game in the Civic Center um, during exhibition. Um, so he was uh, up in the kind of the sponsor area and actually got ended up getting a picture of him holding me as like a toddler. So that was... <laughs> That was pretty cool. I know El- Yashin's a polarizing figure in sense history, but uh, I've got some fond memories of, of that. That's hilarious. Oh, man. And uh, I, I will say, Mitch, uh, Tugnut and Rhodes, great masks. I mean, uh, arguably some of the greatest masks in sense history. Absolutely. I mean, now, now I think Corpy's kind of taking the cake, in, in my opinion. I would agree with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it last night in person, and it is stunning. Oh my God. And the gold, it's like a shimmery gold, right? Last couple of years, we've had Anton Forsberg who goes with like that more matted one, but that Corpus Allo helmet, and we posted uh, on Instagram, Pillsy, you just gushing over it yesterday as well. Yeah. So, yeah, t- take us through uh, Corpus Allo's game as well. I know you look good, feel good, play good. And you got to see a 40 save shutout in Halifax last night. Yeah, that was pretty neat. I mean, uh, that shiny mask did not bother him whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I thought it might, but no, he was, uh, he stood on his head last night. It was really cool to see, um, you know, obviously it kind of felt like a little bit of the villain being there last night. Um, yeah. Sense fans were used to being the underdogs. Um, so it was nice to, to feel that, uh, that winning way again, but, uh, you know, certainly felt bad living in Halifax um, and spending a lot of time here, you know, felt bad for a lot of the people that came to the game and didn't get to see Crosby at least get one um which you know i i would have been okay with um but as a goalie you know if you're in the late in the third period you're really hoping he holds on to it so uh glad he did yeah refs did their best six power plays of the penguins in that game there's a couple questionable ones i won't i won't dive we won't dive too deep into it but uh yeah there's a couple questionable calls for sure yeah no doubt Phil's you got something so paint paint the scene for us mitch is is this the halifax game i'm uh, referring to is this literally like a Crosby homecoming party? Like, is that how it feels when you're there? Because the the TV broadcast was really uh, sugarcoating it. And that's what the whole broadcast was about. Meanwhile, we got a hockey game to play here in the Sens end up shutting them out. Like, it, what was the vibe with that? I know you mentioned it a little bit there. Yeah, no, it was electric. I mean, it was uh, it, it's typical Halifax hockey. Um, you know, if you've ever seen a Mooseheads game, they're, they're pretty wild. Um, World Juniors were here. I was lucky enough to have tickets to to those games as well, and saw you know yeah. Ostap Chuck, uh, you know, play really well in that. But uh, uh, no, it was it was insane. It was definitely a Crosby uh, homecoming. Um, I kind of felt bad for the other Maritimers that were in the game. You know, Brian Graves on the D. Uh, you know, True. of course we had, we had Highmore and uh, Batherson, who uh, you know had an incredible showing in, in Cape Breton. So um, kind of felt bad for the other guys, a little overshadowed. But uh, Crosby deserves it. I mean, he's done so much for for hockey in this community. He really put us on the map. So. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. You know, it kind of reminds me of when uh, the outdoor game was in Ottawa, but there's so many Habs fans that came over. They got to freeze their ass off. In oh, my- that, that game. It was so <laughs> cold. <laughs> there you go. Coldest I've ever been. Bought a beer, and by the time you're at your seat, the whole thing's slush. Yeah, exactly. That was an amazing game, though, right? And Habs fans got to freeze and not even see a goal. So it was kind of similar in the sense that everyone went in, and the sense like, no, no, no goals for you tonight. That's but- right. And he got a shutout, didn't he? Yeah, it was three nothing. Yeah, in that uh-huh. game too, with an empty netter. It was, uh, yeah, it was a nice little touch on there as well. And um, yeah, but get back to the Halifax game. Who who stood out? We know there was a bunch of cuts after the game, but is there one guy, a bubble guy, maybe who you saw in that game or either of the games? And like he's got him be on the opening night roster. Yeah, I mean, the Halifax game was basically what I, you know, with the the exception of the third and fourth lines were um, pretty much NHL, um, our NHL team, right? We had, you know, our top six, um, arguably, and, and then, of course, uh, you know, all of our, our best defensemen uh, starting. So it was a little harder to pick one guy out yesterday. Uh, there's also a couple more pints involved in yesterday's game. The Sydney game sure. was a tie event, so really got to watch a lot of the hockey. Um, you know, who really stuck out to me was uh, Schmeichel. I, I think he's an NHL ready player. Um, I, I don't see a, a world where he doesn't make the make the roster. Um, and Roby played really well as well. So that, those two were really, really stuck out for me. Um, and seeing Brandstrom play and be the only like regular NHL regular defenseman, um, seeing him play as kind of that only person in, in Sydney was really cool to see too, because it, you could really tell the difference between him when he was on the ice and some of the other guys that were out there. So um, kind of a little, gave me a little bit more confidence in, in Branny going into the season. Um, you know, it's a pretty good world when he's your fifth defenseman. 
Yeah, hey, that's that's what I like to hear over here. So that, that's that's good news for me. Now, how different was the pace from the Cape Breton game to the Halifax game? What was it like two different worlds where the Cape Breton one, you're like, like you mentioned, like the Halifax game, it's a lot of the NHL roster. Was it very apparent or was it kind of similar? Yeah, there were bodies flying everywhere. I mean, uh, <laughs> poor Boko. I mean, he was just absolutely yeah. <laughs> bounded by shots on the PK. Um, but no, it was, it was a little bit sloppier, yeah, for sure, uh, in, in Cape Breton. Last night really felt like an NHL game. Yeah, half the size of the, the stadium, too. It was probably more True. of a junior atmosphere, right, just overall. Absolutely. Yeah, nice. Okay, so let's get into this year. Oh, before, I had one more question, because I saw on Twitter, somebody said because it was a Penguins home game, they weren't selling Senators merch at the, the Halifax game. Is that true? That's true, yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it was very much a Pittsburgh home game. I mean, everything from the pregame videos to, you know, everything, was it was all Pittsburgh, put on by Pittsburgh PR for sure. And TSN 5 is the local regional TSN in Halifax, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 So, Senators region. Way to go. I know. Love it. <laughs> Phil's what he got. Yeah, let's uh let's get into the team this year. So what uh you got a good view at uh, a lot of different players in the two games you saw there, Mitch. Uh who's one guy that you think is gonna have a breakout season? A breakout season. Um, I mean, if Roby gets some time, I think he can he can really uh make a make a difference on a on the third or fourth line. Um but, you know, I think obviously Schmeichel is the, the easy answer. You know, he scored a lot in Europe. I'd like to see if he can do that um, over here. I mean, he had an absolute snipe in Sydney, um, yeah. which was great to see. I think the puck got stuck in the net. I don't know if they showed that on the on the broadcast. But uh, to light up Spencer Knight, who's, you know, one of the you know premier goalies in the league or one of the up-and-comers in the league for sure, um, to, to do that is, you know, pretty impressive. So I think those two are, really stand out for me. Um, depends on when we get this Pinto thing done, right? Um, because – that those lines are going to look a lot, a lot different. Yeah. Who's the X factor on this team for you? The most important player to success. I mean, I, I think you got to say Timmy, um, but I think a lot of people, and this might be a little bit of, of bias because, uh, you know, I'm, I live in Halifax, but I think Drake Batherson is an absolute like line driver. Um, you know, if we put him on the third line, he could really just bring that line up to, to a whole different level, I think. Um, so, you know, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to take him away from the top six because he's just so productive and, and so effective. But, um, you know, I think there's a lot of – we have a lot of luxury right now in, in our top – in really our top nine um, to, to play around with. So, um, yeah. But I think, you know, Timmy's obviously the uh, the easy answer there. So you say get Batherson – or sorry, get Pinto signed and then play Pinto and Batherson on the third line together. They played yeah. a lot together last year. Maybe a little extra size on left wing there, Pilsy, you think might ha might help those two? Yeah, I mean, Kubalik, uh, a little bigger than Alex Brinkett. That would be yeah, good. Maybe. Just a little extra size, physicality there on the left side. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, like, I, I want to gauge, because Ross and I have talked about this on the show a lot, so I want to start gauging other people's uh, feelings about this. What is your nervous panic level on the whole Norris not being quite healthy and then Pinto still not signed? Like, if this team has holes in the second line center and third line center, does that just crumble the whole roster in your opinion? Or, I mean, you mentioned it a couple times, Roby Arventi doing good, uh, Ridley Gregg looking nice. Like, do you think those guys can come in and fill those spots for a small uh, sample size and be okay? Or... Is this whole thing hinging on Norris and Pinto being healthy to get a strong start? Yeah, well, I think it's tough because it, if you see Norris go down with an injury, and you know we haven't seen Norris yet, which is concerning to me. Um, if we see him go down with an injury, chances are he's not going to be out for a couple of games. Um, he's yeah. going to be out for a while. It's probably going to require surgery. You know, knock on wood that that doesn't happen um, again. But uh, you know, that's one of those things that yeah, definitely has me very worried. Um, sure, Roby can you know can fill in in the third line center spot. Ridley Craig can fit a, fill in in the second line center spot. But I think it changes the the conversation we're having about where this team is at the end yeah. of the season if if we get an injury early on. So, um, you know, really just hoping and, and really wishing that, uh, you know, Norris will get a game in either against, you know, Winnipeg or um, to finish up the preseason. So, um, if, you know, if you think it's important to get him some, some uh, reps before the season starts. But, uh, yeah, if he can be healthy, I think we're having a – a conversation that I think we all want to have uh, at the end of the season, which is, you know, the, the, the team actually making the playoffs.
Hope you're enjoying our conversation with Mitch. We'll get right back to it. But first, a word from our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel. I love FanDuel. They are the trusted online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. They're North America's number one sports book. Why would you use anywhere else? You shouldn't because their app is the best in the business. And if you're a new customer, you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. $200 in bonus bets win or lose. So if you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time. The preseason is here. NFL is uh, deep into the season already. MLB playoffs are coming up. I hit big on the Monday night football game. It's great to get some action on the game, a couple shekels in so you get involved. And you can do that in multiple ways. You can do spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, now back to our conversation. Here is Mitch Donnelly. To make the playoffs, you have to have a strong start. Ottawa hasn't had that in five, six, seven. I can't even remember the last time they were above 500 in the first 20 games. How long is your leash or level of patience with DJ Smith to start the year? I, I keep on going back and forth with DJ. Um, you know, it's it's tough. You know, I, I think it really depends on how he shapes that fourth line. He has his guys. And to me, like bringing someone like Josh Bailey in, he proved to me, at least, you know, watching it live in, in Sydney, that he's not an NHL player this year. Um, he just wasn't, he wasn't able to keep up. There was constant giveaways. It was really tough to watch. Um, so, um, you know, with DJ, you know, it depends on how he, how he structures that fourth line. McEwen's been giving away the puck a lot too. And, yeah. um, you know, I know you need some size and I know you need some physicality on that fourth line, but um, the way the league's changing, it's, you know, you don't need to have three guys that can really throw the body around on that fourth line. Would you rather Boko Imama if it's going to be one or the other? If, you, if you're going to have Imama or McEwen, who would you put on the fourth line? I mean, I saw Boko leave it all out there the other night. Um, so, you know, I'd rather see him slot in there for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the same mind. Something with McEwen too, I've noticed, and, and you're right, Mitch, a lot of giveaways. But I find when he's like coming at a guy who has the puck, he, he misses a lot and overskates it and like just allows them a, a clear lane past him rather than at least stay between the net and, and the body. So, yeah, yeah, I've already seen enough in a couple of preseason games. Seems like a great guy, but uh, yeah, I, I think I've seen enough at the NHL. Oh, he's been on this show, hasn't he? Who's that? Uh, McEwen. No, no, we, we were uh, we were thinking about it. We'll, we'll see. We'll okay. See if we can get McEwen on during the year, though. So, yeah, seems like a great guy, but uh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like you do have to have that grit, that tenacity, and I'm into that, but uh, the three-year term now, and I, th- I feel like we're going to see a lot of McEwen this year one way or another. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, now, Mitch, a, a lot of different people, uh, they're coming up with their own ideas and ways to clear caps so they can get Shane Pinto signed here. If you had it your way, put yourself uh, in armchair GM mode in place of Pierre Dorian here, what is your ideal scenario to clear up some caps so that uh, Shane Pinto can get signed and we can get going here? Yeah, I mean, look, he, he Pierre Dorian, you know, love him or hate him and, and analyze his picks over the last few years. And, and you can say what you want about the, the hits and, and also the misses, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a tough job. Uh, like, I, I got to say, like, he's got you really got a tough job. I don't want to give you the no answer answer. But, you know, you know, I, I think going into this preseason, I thought Matthew Joseph had um, declining value and that would be tough to get rid of him without attaching another asset. Um, but clearly we're putting our assets on waivers and, you know, let's really hope that, you know, JBD and, and, so- and Sokolov don't get claimed today. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, th- it's kind of dark days if they do, um, in my opinion, for the AHL roster, because these are guys that we've put a lot of time and effort in. But um, Joseph's played really well in the preseason. Um, and I think his, his value has really uh, been on the rise. Um, no doubt he's a great penalty killer. No doubt he's speedy as heck. Yep. Um, but I, you know, I, one thing that goes back to his Tampa days and I have a buddy who I went to the game with last night, he's a huge Tampa fan. Um, and he said, you know, he's never been able to finish. And, you know, I think that has translated to his sense game as well. Um, you know, if you're going to be getting, you know, five on three, five on four, you know, penalty kill breakaways, you got to finish those, um, that can change the, the course of a game. Um, and you know, if he's not going to be able to finish, then I don't see any reason why he needs to be on the sense lineup. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they get out of this mess. Now, I see you for people watching on YouTube, you got the Stutzla jersey behind you. Is it is it signed in the middle of that eight? 
it Did is I see that yeah. right yeah yeah it is so uh i've, nice. I've got a got a couple of them now um I actually left about four of them in uh, in in sydney but uh i've kind of gone the last couple of years kind of a little bit of uh my wife said if i get another one i'm i think i'm gonna be kicked out to the streets but, <laughs> Uh, let's hear your collection what what else do you got yeah what's the limit how many do we have in the collection i yeah. think we have eight right now um okay, okay. that's, so that's, old, that's uh, uh an old carlson uh, when you say old let us know which ones people want okay to yeah so we've got the 3d logo uh home jersey for spezza nice. uh we've got the carlson jersey before you got the c uh third jersey okay um, the black one with the o um wow. and then we've got josh norris home uh wait yeah not josh norris, norris home jersey okay um I'm sorry, away jersey. Um, that's also signed in a shadow box. Um, nice. We've got Stutzel, um home. We've got Brady Kachuk home. Um, with the C? With the C, yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, and we've got a, uh, before Tim, Timmy actually decided how he was going to spell his name on the jersey. You have I, the UE? I have the UE. Nice. <laughs> okay. Thought, obviously. 80, um, 88 or what? What's that? Uh, no, it's 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 88 would have been funny, but uh, yeah, no, 18. And then... Uh, Ended up going with uh, Drake Matherson one as well. That's signed his, with his uh, his first NHL hat trick. Oh, all sick. right. Wait, I got a follow up question. Your your wife will not be seeing this. We're not going to let her her in on this. What would be the next jersey you would get if uh, if you're able to sneak that one through? It's got to be an eighty five. Yeah, uh, yeah. white black. Uh, I think I'd have to go white or or you know if they do a third jersey this year, um, probably that one because I've been seeing those red ones and I'm like, man, those are so nice. A hey, final question for me, Mitch. We appreciate you doing this. It's been an absolute blast. Design the third jersey this year. Where are you hoping to see Laurels, the Senegoth make a comeback? Is the 3D retro at this point? Like, where, where are you going with the uh, with the third jersey? If you could, that's a good question. You know, I, I like the uh, I like the Senegoth. I'd love to see it come back. Um, I don't. I think I don't think the 3D is quite a th- quite retro yet. Um, but having the Senegoth on the uh, on the arm pa- on the shoulder patches and those last ones it's a bit of a tease. So I'd like to see that come back with the laurels, um, and then maybe I, I literally what what Pilsley has right behind him. I, I love that jersey, and just a modern take on that would be awesome. I I honestly think something like like the one behind me, but maybe just make it red. Like just have red be the base color to to put a little twist on it. Uh, I'd be down for that. It has to be red if you if you're gonna have a black and a white. The yeah, third exactly. You're not going gold at this point. Vegas kind of, you know, got got out in front of that one, right? Because that's yeah, not, I'm not a fan. Gold and the black in that jersey, you might have something, but yeah, so it's, it, we're not in Vegas here in, in Ottawa, Ontario, unfortunately. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> uh, Pills, you got a final one for Mitch? Uh, gotta, I guess we got to let this guy rest. What what a couple days, eh? Yeah, no, no kidding. So I'll, I'll just, uh, I like opening the floor up to citizens at the end. Uh, the floor is yours. Is there anything we didn't talk about? Questions you have for us? Uh, go ahead. No, not really. I mean, uh, you know, excited that we got to go to two games back to back nights. My brother-in-law, Nick and I, I have to give him a shout out because uh, we make an annual trip out of it. So, um, nice. so we're going up in, uh, in November, we're going to go watch the home game against Calgary on the 11th. So uh, okay. looking forward to being there um that's gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully hear news soon about the believe central pub we were big fans of it last year we hit the, the we shuttle go. um and it was it was awesome so uh, hopefully we'll get that back for this season as well we oh just, that's good timing last night we just got the schedule yep. from the glebe central pub so you are in luck november 11th verse cow departing one and a quarter hours before the game so we'll see Central pub, Mitch. No, this is uh, this is awesome. And and my final final question then, November eleventh. By then, will DJ Smith be the head coach? Ooh. That's a, that's yep. early in the season. I'm going with yes, and because of because we're we were off to a hot start. Okay, nice. okay, it. and a lot of home games before that. Like you're you're looking at a pivotal period here in the most dangerous month. How? Why'd you guys pick November? I and think that's the reason. Yeah, risky. <laughs> You, you like- November's the reason. I think we went in January last year when they were already kind of out of it. We want to be part of the hunt. And you know that I think the hunt starts in October for us this year. So love it. That's Mitch Donnelly, Send Central Citizen. Mitch, appreciate you joining us. Really glad to kind of live vicariously through your weekend. And we'll do this again down the road, man. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Stick taps to Mitch for joining us. Really fun conversation. And wow. I'm fired up about Eunice Corpusalo. We heard it from Mitch. He was dialed in. 40 saves look good. 
and he played better. What were your thoughts, Pelzi, on watching Eunice Corpusalo after four goals on not so many shots against Montreal? I didn't think he necessarily looked poor outside yeah. of maybe the, uh, the game-winning goal there by Cole Caulfield in the only loss, by the way, that the Senators have suffered this preseason. But what's your overall takeaway now that you've seen 120 minutes of Eunice Corpusalo? Well, after I got my whole uh, blackout restrictions fiasco uh, settled with, I went full Karen mode calling managers and trying to figure this out. So I, I think I've mostly got it figured out here. So I was able to catch up on the game after all that. Jonas Corpusalo looks really sharp in uh, in gold, not just because he has the greatest uh, mask of Ottawa Senators history, go vote Ring of Honor, still voting on Twitter. Um, but what I like about Corpusalo, Ross, is he does a really good job scanning. Like when you watch a point shot, and, you know, it's uh, it's like a ping pong or not ping pong. What do you call it? Plinko. Plinko. And it's like bouncing off a million different players and sticks and skates. He's scanning really well. He does a really good job of recovering and having good positioning after rebounds. Like there wasn't too many spots where he was had put himself in a bad position to make a second save. I, I was very impressed with him. He's really good down low. So. I'm, I know I've famously said I'm cautiously optimistic about Jonas Corposalo, but uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards the uh, more of the optimistic side of the scale here rather than the cautious side. So that's a good thing for sure. A couple more 40 save shutouts. Maybe you'll actually be a real uh, believer in Jonas Corposalo and Anton Forsberg, who's made 69 out of 72 saves this uh, preseason. He's been unbelievable in his two games, the win in Cape Breton and then earlier on in one of the Toronto games. So, Hey, if they can keep this up throughout the season, the Sens are going to be in better shape than maybe going on Twitter right now would indicate because it's a pretty toxic environment with the way that the cuts have been handled. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of chimed in here there, most notably just to get under Elliot Friedman. So when people click on him, one of the more popular Twitter accounts, we're, we're popped in right there. So nice. obviously that's a little strategic more than anything. But I think that there's there's kind of a, uh, a reason to be either way. You can be optimistic. You can look at all the the star pieces that are in this, this roster, the fact that it's, you know, waiver spots and 13th forwards and seventh defensemen that are really causing the ire of everybody right now. I think it's probably a pretty good sign of what's to come this season. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that's the thing, like, Obviously, we've put a lot of concentration calories into the development of JBD, Igor Sokolov, Lassie Thompson, Ross. You, you and I have talked about those three a lot on this show since we started in 2019. But it, it gets to a point where guys like that and the, the, the development paths are not the number one priority of this team anymore. And it's weird shifting into that, Ross, as we've been a uh, rebuilding draft-focused podcast for 886 episodes but it's it's a new era here and guys like that unfortunately are going to fall by the wayside here to to keep stronger roster higher played higher paid players on here as as the goals of this team have changed any final thoughts on today's show pelzi final thoughts for me are Two preseason games left one in your neck of the woods in winnipeg then up against montreal I, I like the preseason. It's fun, but man, am I ready for these games to matter? Um, I'm ready for these games to matter. So I just let's let's keep things moving along here. October 11th can't come soon enough. And also, I guess another final thoughts for me is uh, new Chell game coming out October 6th. I'm excited for that as well. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had one of the voices of the NHL video game on the show this week? Oh, that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. That is one of two big guests coming up this week. We had one already. I teased it yesterday. We've got a second one. I think you know who it is. Friend of the show. One of the voices on the NHL video game. I want to ask them what it's like to be in that environment and, and what the whole process is like to get taped up for Chell, as it's affectionately known as the NHL video game on console. All right, Pilsy. My final thoughts is uh, I don't know when we're recording tomorrow. Because it's going to be an interesting day. We're going to find out hopefully when the Sens skate. But I'm more curious. We don't want to save, save the episode until too late in the day. So I think Thursday will be when we get into the uh, whether Igor Sokolov and or JBD clear. Or, or maybe you'll get a bonus video for that. But tomorrow's going to be interesting. When, when the Sens skate, now that the roster is trimmed down to about six forward lines and seven defensemen, now it's going to be gearing up for the regular season. Tryouts are all but wrapped up, right? There's a couple, much. maybe, but 
but this was the biggest round of cuts. So in terms of like, oh, Clevin, like he had a chance to make the team. Sokolov, he had a chance to make the team. We thought JVD was on the team. Those were like the bigger surprises in all of this. But it means one thing, Pilsy. Senators hockey is coming up in just one week and one day's time. We are almost there. We hope you stick with us the whole way along. We are the only daily podcast covering Ottawa Senators hockey on YouTube and wherever you download your audio podcast. We're on Twitter at Send Central and on Instagram, LockedOn.Senators. For today, we say goodbye. Have a great night, everyone. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.